Hi everyone. Um, today I'll talk to you about my research paper. It's on uh, crime and remittance um, using the case of El Salvador and also mostly using uh, quantitative methods. Um, I'm from political science, but uh, during that uh, research, I'm going to touch a lot of economics um, themes. First, what is remittance? It's an amount of money sent by a worker, a migrant, to a relative or a friend in his or her home country. Um, in 1985, an article from uh, Lucas and Stark started a debate on motivations to remit. Um, they use a case of Botswana and having mixed results at the end, the debate on motivation start with having on one side the altru altruism and the other side the um, self-interest um, thesis. Um, for the um, altruistic thesis, um, as a consequence, um, remittance should increase in times of financial uncertainty. On the other hand, for a self-interested um, thesis, remittance should decrease in times of financial uncertainty. Why? Uh, actually, few scholars found out uh, through their studies that um, remittance is sometimes a way of investing in your uh, own country in having the thought of coming back to the country uh, one day. Um, we still have uh, many scholars working on that debate, uh, then I think the question isn't over yet. Um, I decided to work on instability caused by criminal uh, violence. Um, this research will consider that there is a strong association between intention to migrate and gang violence in Latin America. As well, um, we consider that um, there is an economic cost uh, for violence and there's a lo loose loss of uh, employment opportunities in gang influenced territories. Therefore, I think that crime um, is a unique um, exploratory variable for understanding relationship between remittance and uncertainty. Um, yeah. Um, uh, the, um, as for most of the um, studies on crime, um, only the case of Mexico's, Mexico and Colombia have been dealt um, with. Uh, first, actually, there's three main uh, research on that link between crime and remittance. First, there's Brito and all. Uh, they studied only with one year um, in Mexico whether municip municipalities receiving more uh, remittance at high, higher or lower homicide rates. Uh, they conclude that the higher the remittance in the household, in the municipality, the lower the homicide rates is in the, the municipality. Um, and that goes well with the self-interest uh, theory. After that, you have uh, Messenger and all. Um, this is my favorite uh, study. Um, I inspired my study a bit on theirs. Um, they studied the relationship between an increase or a decrease of, in violence on the number of households receiving remittance in a given territory. Based on data on drug-related murders in Mexico for the year of 2006 and the 2010, uh, they suggest that an increase in murders is associated with a decrease in the number of households receiving remittance. Um, after that, you have the Vargas and Silva, um, which is who is looking at um, the relationship between the total amount of remittance and household in crime affected areas in Colombia using only one uh, survey from 2003. Um, even uh, if Vargas Silva has uh, mixed uh, findings at the end, uh, it tends more towards uh, the um, self-interest motivations as the, do the other um, researchers we've talked about. Why El Salvador? Why I use this case? I think it's a unique case. First, because of the data. I'll show you later in the next slides. You're going to see why. Um, after that, El Salvador has a higher and more volatile homicide rate than Mexico and Colombia. 
actually El Salvador has been first for a few years with the highest um, homicide rates in the world. Uh, El Salvador is among the two top three countries in Latin America whose inhabitants think um, most about immigrating. It has been first as well uh, for many years in the last 10 years um, for the country with the people that want to leave the most. Um, to, uh, for um, the share of remittance uh, of the GDP is also much higher in El Salvador. It's 21% of the GDP, it represents 21%. In, uh, then in, in Mexico, it's only 3%, in Colombia, 2.1%. And for looking at that special phenomenon, I think El Salvador is great. And lastly, um, El Salvador is a smaller country where crime is more widespread and homogeneous. I'll show you my data. Actually, I took it from Digestic, which is, which is the national um, agency for data for statistics in El Salvador. Um, they publish um, every year for every department um, tons of statistics. And as you can see in the, the picture I put in the, the diaporama, um, you can get the number of households receiving um, remittance, the number of people, the uh, amount that they receive, but you can also uh, look at the power, poverty rates, um, population, everything. I think uh, it's a really complete um, survey and data. Um, that was the data for remittance. And the data for crime is even better. Uh, it's from the PNC, which is the Policia Nacional Civil and Pol Police. Um, you can get data for each kind of, um, each type of, uh, like, uh, deli, uh, delitos <laughs> for each co uh, municipality, for each department, uh, for every month of every year. Um, I used few of these um, type of crime. Um, first, I use um, homicide rates, extortion rates, and thief rates, um, but thief rates, um, I'm not going to really use it. I use that as from 2009 to 2014. I might have 2015, but I still have a problem with that here. Um, that's what looks, how looks my data after cleaning it and doing a new uh, frame. Um, my main model, um, my dependent var variable is the percentage of people receiving remittance. Um, and my exploratory variables are um, homicide rates, extortion rates, and thieves rates, um, then crime uh, uh, indicators. Um, as you can see in the picture, um, I have a strong level of significance for um, all these, um, these indicators, um, but the, the technique I use for doing these uh, regression might not be the best one. I'll show you it later on. Um, but still, we can see that there, there's something going on. For homicide rates, the more the homicide rate's gonna be, the, the higher it's gonna be, the lower the, uh, the percentage of people receiving room it's gonna be. It's like the findings of the other researcher we talked about later, uh, earlier. Um, for extortion rates, it's the contrary. The more you have the extortion rate, the higher it is, the lower people is going to receive remittance. That's uh, some graph uh, looking at uh, the relationships. Um, I think if we look at it, the, the one on the top right corner is might be the nicest one, which is extortion rate. Um, for testing my panel, uh, testing what what uh, kind of model I should use, I use test. Uh, like Austin test and uh, Broach Pagan test, and for depends on the regression. But I usually have to work with random effect model, and using random effect model, I see that extortion rate is the one with the highest uh, level of significance. Um, and coming back to the question about altruism and self-interest. Um, it's kind of hard to understand because omission, homicide rates um, are correlating the, the thesis of self-interest and uh, self-interest and the extortion rate is corroborating the, 
the, um, the altruistic um, thesis. But is extortion a good variable? I'm not sure yet. And that's a question I'm going to still have to work on. Um, yeah. Uh, two problems with my data and my model. First, there was, there was a financial, uh, financial crisis from 2008 to 2011 and had a great, like, it had a lot of remittance. And I think a lot of uh, increase in remittance are due to um, coming back from the crisis. Um, second, in March 2011, the Salvadorian concluded a secret truce with Yang um, to reduce homicide rates. For 15 months, uh, we had low uh, homicide rates, and after that, big um, increase. As you can see in the top right corner uh, graph, um, and I, I test as well these years that were most affected by the truce, and my level of significance is still it, it are way weaker uh, than using all the years because um, I don't know. Actually, I, I still I, I know, but I'm not going to talk about it now. And just something important: extortion rates still seem to be the strongest um, coefficient. Or exploratory variable. Ooh, um, older variable, I, since I had a lot, um, I decided to test a few of them for fun. Um, actually, not only for fun, but I test uh, the amount um, of remittance received by households uh, with um, my exploratory variable um, poverty, the, the level of poverty. And in that, uh, doing the test as well, the panel data test, uh, I should use pooled, uh, pooled OLS. And as you can see, my level of significance are really high, 99.9%. Um, .9%. Um, and coming back um, to the debate around altruism and self-interest, um, that uh, this uh, graph, this uh, regression, um, is going towards the tends towards the, the um, self-interest uh, thesis. Uh, as you can see, the more the less the the more the poverty is I, the less the people receive. But I'm not sure if it's a good um, variable. Um, I still have several questions um, I need to answer. First, um, also I have already tested in Germany and the tourist eteracity um, etera, yeah, of my variables. Um, the relationship between extortion and remittance needs to be further examined. Um, second, can the use of other indicators of violence counteract uh, the effect of the truce on homicide rates and provide me with an interesting experimental variable? And can I use the other uh, type of crime to explain that? Um, it has, hasn't been done in these, uh, this particular um, phenomenon uh, of uh, remittance and crime. And thirdly, is poverty rates an interesting um, experimental variable? Um, I don't have time to talk about it, but I have an opinion. Um, However, I believe that um, I have for the moment results that further corroborate um, the self-interest thesis. This is what the other researchers um, I mentioned have concluded uh, using homicide rates. But however, I think my strongest uh, coefficient, my strongest variable is extortion and it defends the altruistic thesis. I'm not done yet with this paper, but I want to find out. Thank you very much. This is my reference. Goodbye.